Welcome, welcome, welcome to this episode of the Hustle Faithfully Podcast, where determination meets devotion. You can find us on all streaming platforms at www.hustlefaithfully.com. Well, Ricardo, here we are to week number four of operating at ground zero. We've talked about how to be aware of your deficiencies, communication, integrity, and now we're ending it with authenticity. Yes. Everything really goes all together, all of those things. To be authentic, that means to be the real you. Mm-hmm. Everybody wears a mask. Mm-hmm. Everybody in this world wears a mask of some kind. Yet, who are you at the core? Who are you deep down inside? In a previous episode in this series, I made mention of somebody specific that I was talking about that they really were one of the most loving people you'd ever meet, Mm -hmm. yet their delivery made it seem the opposite in in all reality. She was authentic in who she was. She was authentic in how deep she loved uh, pretty much everybody she met. Mm -hmm. And she was authentic in sharing her faith with everybody that she came in contact with. Mm -hmm. The way that she delivered it was not always the best. It was not always done intact. Mm -hmm. Yet she was as authentic as she could possibly be. Yeah. Did that mean her life was perfect? No, absolutely not. Are any of our lives perfect? Far from it. Right. I I can only speak for myself. But yet, when you are authentic in being who you are and never leaving that guessing game for other people, right? If you're authentically a friend of someone, you know, or they know that you're the person that if they were to call in the middle of the night, you're there to pick them up. Mm-hmm. because their car broke down. You're there to do whatever. They know that you are there through thick and thin, that you've got their back. A common term nowadays is a ride or die. Right. That friendship is authentic. Now, what about all the friendships that are deep? We've talked about something similar to this in a previous episode. The friendships are deep. And then they no longer exist. Now, we're not talking about the same thing as previously when it is a thing of I'm pouring into you and I'm being real with you and not ear tickling you. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, you know, this is the person that y'all did all your hobbies together. You, You just did life together outside of your own family. And then they come to an end. Do you have any long-term friends? And by long-term, I know that's defined differently by everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, We all know that people are in our life for a reason, for a season. Very few are in our life for life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that's part of wedding vows. Doesn't always happen. But I'm I'm not just talking marriage. I'm talking life in general. Mm -hmm. When we talk when we talk about authentic friendships, I'm sure you have somebody that comes top of mind to you immediately, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, I believe there's there's a few people that um, that friendship is authentic in uh, the sense of them being who I've known them to be. Mm-hmm but for the person that they knew me to be okay at the time that i met them without us having close intimate relationship now i know what to expect out of them where they were when i when i last saw them Hmm. they know what to expect out of me where i was when they last saw me but they don't know me now any more so than i know them now so when we interact we interact authentic but it's authentic in the in the the idea that was authentic when we last saw one another. But now being authentic for the old version of us, 
and actually be inauthentic now in our interaction. Right. You know, because I'm I'm trying to relate to you and in, in, uh, through my old self and relate to your old self. But I can't really authentically relate to you now because I don't even know you now. Hmm. You know, so <clears throat> that's that's the thing about authenticity. It's consistent and it's constant. And I say consistent and constant, consistent in the sense that to be authentically you, you also, that means you got to continue to grow in even being who I am. I'm growing in that area. Right. You know, I'm not the same person in the sense that I, I at the core, I'm, I'm me. I've always been me. But am I operating out of that place now, but out of trauma? So even though I'm me there, I respond sometimes traumatically. Because I've been traumatized in a way where even being me, I do so in a way that's guarded. I express myself in a way that's that that's um, um, where I'm, I'm not trusting like I used to be. Mm-hmm. So I'm still me here, but I'm responding out of trauma. So now this becomes an adopt an adopted uh, identity, which I do consistently enough to where in my mind, this is who I am because it's coming out of a place of authenticity. But then now it becomes engrafted onto that area that you've known me, but it's like you're off. There's like, I know you here and you you typically would do this. And I see you. It's like I see the same car, but it's beat up and, it, and it's got a different paint job on it. But I look at the, 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 the license plate and I look at the name on it where it says so and so Chevy or whatever it is. I look inside. It has the same Venom and all that stuff. But it, but it's off. Mm-hmm. It's not like it was last time I saw it. Right. So it's the same car, but it's beat up. So th- that's the thing about, about about authenticity. It's you can be authentic, but operating inauthentically because of some damage you've incurred in that relationship. Mm. When you are putting yourself under the leadership of somebody, whether it's long term leadership or whether it's a here and now. Mm-hmm. Said differently, long-term leadership may be a church that you choose to go to. Yeah. Whereas a here and now may be a weekend seminar that you go to, and and that's it. I mean, you're, there's nothing more after that. But nonetheless, whether you're going to that church mm-hmm. or you're going to the weekend seminar, you're putting yourself under that person's leadership for yeah. that period of time. Yeah. How do you choose and determine? The criteria to look for to say this person's authentic because words don't always match up with reality. Mm -hmm. You know, time will expose you or time will promote you. I remember a seminar that I went to and one of his final questions on the last day was, what are you looking for being here? Mm -hmm. Now, yes, it was asked at the beginning too. Generally, you're going to have a different answer come the end of it Mm -hmm. if they did a good job because, you know, what you're looking for, you you found or realize it's not there or whatever. So you probably have a different answer. And I remember I raised my hand. I stood up in front of the entire room and I said, I'm looking to see if you're an authentic person. Mm -hmm. He, He gives me this spill of, you know, without... It wasn't really a spill, but, you know, yes, I am. And then he gives me a hug, all this type of stuff. Well, I signed up for his, his, his thing. I was very much under his leadership mm-hmm. for about six to nine months. Mm-hmm. And I started seeing cracks along the way. Mm-hmm. And now I'm not one that I see a crack or I see something that upsets me about somebody or, or, or church or whatever. And I'm like, I'm out. I want to see if it's repetition because again, like we've mentioned, we're human beings. We're going to make mistakes. But when I kept seeing more and more inauthentic things, yeah, it really made me question him, made me start looking at him even more. And lo and behold, there's no authenticity with the way that he puts himself out to be and who he puts himself out to be. So I made a real mistake there. Mm -hmm. But like we talked about on a previous uh, uh, segment of this episode is fail means first attempt in learning. Mm -hmm. So I take into consideration what I learned by trusting him 
and in current and future people, mm-hmm. I will know, hey, here's some signs. So what are some of the criteria that you look for with anybody that you are going to look at as a leader in mm-hmm. any way? Well, the, the one thing that, that I do is to make sure that the things that they say, so their words, their actions and behaviors line up consistently mm-hmm. across the board. Doesn't matter what's going on, doesn't matter where they are, no matter who they're in front of, whether it's live or whether it's pre-recorded, whether it's over the, the, via video conference or whether it's in a back room somewhere. Right. Their words, their actions, and behavior lines up consistently. And when you interact with other people around them, their interaction with those other people may vary in degrees as far as how they interact because their relationship with that person, but they're still them while they're doing it. They're still interacting the same way relationally, even if their expressions of it are differently because this person, I have to talk to them a certain way. That's something and that's a sign that that I look for that says this person is a good steward of what they've been given in the sense that whoever God created them to be, whatever gifts they've been given, whoever they are, they're a good steward over their identity because that's who they are consistently. And they're OK being them and they're good at being them all the time because every time I see them, they are that. Mm-hmm. People will also show you who they are in a in a in a uh, will reveal their identity to you in a way that they may not always know that they're doing where they'll tell you that they're this, they may perform some functions and actions that look like that. Some of their behaviors may also appear to reinforce that, but they are do there are other things that they do that are just as consistent and even more so consistent than even the things they say. Some of the little things they do to try to, to, to shore up the things they say mm-hmm. or some of the behaviors that they are intentional about displaying that show up what they say, but they are consistently failing at doing so consistently. So this tells me that the things that I see when they're not that what they say, they're, they're telling me this is actually who they are. Because mm-hmm. this is what you say. These are the things I see you because I see now that th- these things that you're doing that look like what you're saying are actually, these are props mm. that you're using. They help show up the stage performance. So I can believe that you're actually in a in a home. You're actually on the stage. It looks like that if, if I if I zoom in enough and I don't show all the stuff around it. I just see the the setup. Mm-hmm. But when I when I when I step back from it and look at it from a different perspective and don't zoom in on it, I can see that that's not really where you are. Right. That's not really you. So you reveal to me, even with all the props and all the things you're saying that that. You your authenticity lies in the things around you that you're hiding from, and you don't even know you're not being authentic. Now, some people do know that they're that they're putting on a facade, but some have gotten so so um, uh, consistent or so used to creating an identity that they don't even know who they are authentically because the the last version of themselves that they knew they fell out of love with, or they never knew to love. It was so broken that they didn't want that, that they were so hurt that they didn't want to identify with that. So they never learned to be authentic. So they manufactured one, but they will vacillate back and forth between mistaken identity mm. and actual identity. And they don't know how to be either. Wow. Now, let me switch this up a little bit on you and get your thoughts on this. We In the last episode, we talked about communication. And how there's nonverbal communication. Yeah. Everything that we do, the way that we walk, the way that we dress, the way that we cut our hair Mm -hmm. says something about who we are. Yeah. You take somebody and let's say they are wealthy, Mm -hmm. yet they dress like a bum. Mm -hmm. Or you have somebody that has just enough money to go buy their Gucci shirt. Mm-hmm. So they wear a Gucci shirt. Is either one, both, neither being inauthentic in the way that they express themselves to the outside world just in their dress? I, I honestly don't think you are what you wear. That's that was a that's a choice you make. Yep. You can like I can I can be me 
and and wear a tank top just as much as I can be me and wear a ten thousand dollar uh, suit. I like it. I like I, today. I, I'm 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 comfortable in the tank top. I'm still the same person, and I still feel the same way. But tomorrow, I may want to wear this outfit because today is what I, I felt like doing. That's mm-hmm. what I wanted to do. Right. I'm still being me. This doesn't make me. And you can tell it doesn't make me because any other day you can see me wearing any other thing and I don't act any different. I just, it's just what I feel like wearing today. Nah. So it's the red shoes versus the brown shoes. So it's a thing of just being authentically you no matter what the outside world sees. That's part of being authentic, isn't That's it? That's exactly what it is. It's not subject to someone else's thoughts or opinions of you. And it's not dictated by the circumstance you're in. It exists outside. It exists outside of the bubble, the societal bubble, you know, the things that people say you should do, how you should be, how you should behave, all these other things that are societal norms that they say, this is how you should be. But that may not be who you actually are. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that we do to interact with other people in order to connect with other people relationally. But at the end of the day, I am who I am. And I'm not, I'm not communicating with you inauthentically. I'm cu- communicating with you in a way where you understand me and I understand you. Mm-hmm. But that's just a way with, that's a, a way to, to relate and communicate with people. But I communicate with all people like that because I have to communicate them with, uh, with them like that. But when I'm by myself and it's just me, the way that I am is the way that I am. And I don't I, I don't change that for anybody. I don't I don't uh, I don't try to be something that I'm not. The only reason I engage this way is because I have to communicate with other people. Mm-hmm. So that's the part of the societal norm when it comes to just communicating with people. That's that you 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 communicate. You have a style of communication, but we still have to communicate in a way where we're able to connect with other people and, and convey cer- certain things that people and understand certain people. And there, there are certain guidelines that we operate according to out here in the world that are expected because if not, it's like someone looking at a stop sign like a, a as a yield sign and someone looking at the stop sign. So that means go. You know, like, no, it's that, that I think the expectation is that it's to say stop, you stop. Right. You know, that's not a that's not a a, 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 it's not a that, suggestion. <laughs> right. Right. So that's not that's, that's not that's a, a that's a, an, an expected societal norm that we all adhere by here in the Western world. But when it comes to being authentic, that that's that comes from inside and it's projected outwardly, not grab the whole of outside and drawn inwardly. You know, so it should exist no matter where you exist, hmm. you know, so that so that, that that at least that's the way I, I, I see uh, authenticity. Yeah, I agree. It is all in all being who you are, no matter if you are in front of a big group of people or if yeah. it's just you by yourself. Yeah. What about if there's a situation where. People are not living in authenticity. Mm-hmm. Now, I am one that believes that you live a life of lies. You mm-hmm. live a life of deceit. You live a life of non-authenticity. It's weighing on your mind at all times. Mm-hmm. For the ones that are listening to this that, in all reality, have not been living an authentic life, mm-hmm. and they're tired of running from this facade, this mm-hmm. fake person that they have made up and attempted to convince people that they are, how would they break out of going from the non-authentic life to being authentic? Mm-hmm. Are they going to lose their authenticity when they say, Hey, that really wasn't me. Or what does that look like in your opinion? Well, you, you don't, you don't lose something that you never had. Mm-hmm. You, you, you don't know what being you authentically looks like. So you you can't lose it because you never had it. You have to first gain it. So you have to find out what 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 your ground zero is. What is that? Like, where is it that I've, I've been the most impacted or, or hurt the most or the most broken in my life? Now, this doesn't mean you go around saying this person said this to me or did that to me. No, it's deeper than what they said or what they did. It's how you responded to it. So it's what how did they alter the way you saw yourself? And you interact with with life and people around you. That's the ground zero because it was a it was a, a earth shaking, a ground altering event that right. took place. Well, it wasn't just you; you were it, it caused you to end the friendship. 
uh, it caused you to I quit that job or whatever it is. No, it shook you. It absolutely redirected you and caused you to when you walk away from that, you felt like you left something behind you, like a part of you seemed to be left behind. So the rest of your life lived separate from that means you live the rest of your life inauthentically because you didn't bring all of you with you. So in order for you to find out what being you looks like, you have to start to look at where you left you. I got pieces of me scattered all over the place. Where did I leave these parts of me? Where did my joy, my joy started to be eroded or where did I lose it? Where did I lose my trust in people? What did I lose my self-confidence? Mm -hmm. What did I lose my ability to hope or to dream? You know, where did I lose these things? What happened? Where was that ground zero? What that was impact in my life that was so bad that I was unwilling to sort through the rubble to find it. I, it, it was easier to walk away from it. So I didn't experience the, 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 the immediate pain. Right. I don't even know what I left behind. I just know the pain was present. So I left. Mm -hmm. And then years later, you enter into a relationship and realize you don't have what you used to have. That same presence that, like I said, that hope, that ability to dream big, you play it safe now. What did I lose that ability to dream when that, when my, when this cratered in my life and I walked away from the pain and left that in the rubble and I never gone back to recover. It. So you have to find out where that, where is my ground zero mm -hmm. in this area? And then you have to backtrack to that place and you have to deal with the things that you should have dealt with at that time yeah. that you didn't deal with. And you begin and you begin to grab these pieces of yourself you left behind. And then not just that, those pieces are adolescent in, 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 the, in the, the time span of your life. If that happened at 20, that part is still 20, even though the rest of you is 41. Mm -hmm. So now I got to grow that area. I got to grow up in this place. I'm still in, in, in an adolescent place. I'm still underdeveloped there. That's me, but it's an underdeveloped part of me because I haven't had it, so I haven't stewarded it, stewarded it over it, and I haven't grown it. So now not only do I have to go back and get me, I got to grow me up. You know, So this, this whole process takes time, but as long as you're willing to interact with it and not stiff arm it, it'll grow, and it'll catch up because – once you grab hold of it and you begin to interact with the part of you that you haven't had, there's an excitement learning you again. Mm -hmm. There's an excitement feeling more whole again. And there's an expectation that you have that you'll be. It's, it's just this idea of all of ha ha has in our mind of, of a better or greater or this idea of more that we all have. But we don't know what that more is. And then you get a taste of it or, or something that you've. You you've had an experience with before, but you haven't had a recent experience. So you kind of lose lose uh, uh, the ability to really relate to what it really felt like. I remember that that was good, but I don't know how good it was. And then you get a taste of it. It's like, oh, man, I remember that feeling. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember that what I felt when I used to dream and, and, I, and I used to get excited about this, that and the other. And you start to feel that. What do you do? You start to pour resources in it, mental and emotional resources in this thing that you now grab a hold of again. And it accelerates at a rate that nothing else in your life does. Because there's an excitement because I, I feel in something I hadn't right. felt. So that's one way that causes you to be able to become authentic when you realize that you're now not. That honesty we talked about earlier in, in a couple of episodes ago. Yep. The first episode we talked about being talked about being honest at ground zero. Because if you don't get honest with yourself at that point, you spend the rest of your life being dishonest and living uh, living an identity that's not yours and living inauthentically. Hmm. So this is a lifetime commitment in all reality. You better believe it. Everybody has a ground zero at multiple times in their life. Yeah, you do. But whenever you couple focusing on how to improve your deficiencies, your communication, mm -hmm. You live life of integrity. You're very authentic. And you're very honest. You will find yourself rising from that rubble. Yes, you will. And putting on that thinker's cap, putting on that dreamer's cap once again. Mm -hmm. And then the sky's the limit. You go from your ground zero. You go from what you feel is the lowest of the low. 
and then you go to heights that you've never experienced before. That's exactly what happened. But it's based on those ingredients of proper communication, mm -hmm. integrity in everything you do, mm -hmm. honesty, and being authentic. You better believe it. Once you've proven your authenticity to the majority of people that are going to be in your circle, that are going to be in your sphere, that are going to see you no matter what your profession is. Once you've done it, you're still going to have people come against you saying, hey, he's lying. He's inauthentic. Yeah. He's, you know, whatever. What do you do to deal with the people, the groups, the organizations that are there just to tear people down? They see that you're doing good. They mm -hmm. see that you're doing a good work, that your business is thriving. And here they come and their sole purpose, their sole mission is to rip you or your company and its namesake just apart. Mm -hmm. Probably founded on nothing true. Mm -hmm. But how do you deal with something like that? Uh, honestly, I don't. And what I mean by that is if you spend time exhaustive time and measures in areas where there's that where it's un it's a fruitless endeavor you're it's like uh, um fighting the wind you will be exhausted and, and unable to do the things that you need to do in areas that are fruitful because i've exhausted a lot of energy on stuff that's not even real mm. And they'll get me to, to engage in an act of self-sabotage on the thing that they wanted to destroy because I gave them time and attention and not the thing that's actually the thing that's that's the fruitful. And they use me to destroy myself. Hmm. So there was a, a basketball player that we, we that we all know of. That, you know, you know, him. I, I know him not personally, but from his time in the NBA, um, Tim Duncan, one of the nicest guys that that every NBA player I've ever heard talk about. Um, they talked about how nice he was, and he was just – he was this guy you couldn't shake. He was uh, one of the greatest power forwards, the top two or three power forwards probably that's ever played the game of, of basketball. But he was known to not engage in, in you know, trash talking. Mm -hmm. People would trash talk him all the time to try to get him off his game. Yep, They would say all kinds of stuff to him and do all kinds of things to him. and he wouldn't respond in the way that they wanted him to. It would frustrate them mm -hmm. because they were trying to frustrate him. Yep. His way of getting back at them was to consistently does what he does consistently. He balls out. He What he does, he does well. And he does it all the time. It goes back to your words, your actions, and your behavior more your actions and behavior speaking louder than anything anyone else can say about you. Yes. And then when you do speak, your words have impact because your actions and behavior speak so loud. Yeah. So when that stuff happens and people are doing those things and saying those things about you, I don't. I love it. I love it. It's really a lot of the focus on where you're going, not where you are. Yeah. Not where you've been. Focus on where you're going. Yeah. Because we tend to gravitate toward what we're focused on. Mm -hmm. If you're driving and you're looking off on the left-hand side of the road at whatever it is, a rabbit, an accident, whatever, you will more oftentimes than not feel your vehicle just veering off to the left. Yeah. You focus on where you're going. Yeah. In the sport of NASCAR, guess what? They look at the wall to avoid the wall. They're going to hit the wall. Yeah. So you have to focus on your next turn in life. Mm -hmm. You have to focus on the finish line in life and enjoy each lap along the way. While you are being on this journey called life and you are coming out of your ground zero, people are going to see your authenticity. People are going to know if that is the real Ricardo, if that is the real Jonathan. Mm -hmm. They're going to know it. A lot of people won't like it yeah. because it irritates the demons that are inside of them. But continue being yourself. Mm -hmm. Continue pushing on and striving forward. 
and continue listening to the Hustle Faithfully podcast. Yes, please. Where do. we are wrapping up this episode of Operating at Ground Zero. We've been through a whole lot of information in the past four weeks. We hope you've taken notes. Thankfully for you, everything is recorded, so you can find it across all the streaming platforms at www.hustlefaithfully.com, and you can see the live videos of these recordings at youtube.com forward slash at hustlefaithfully. Right. Join us again next week where we will be unveiling a brand new series and having brand new conversations that mm -hmm. you can apply to your life to help you move forward. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. And we hope that you all would drop comments in the um, comment box below the videos that you watch. If you like the video, like Jonathan has said before, give us a thumb up, thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Uh, let us know if the content isn't good to you. Let us know. If it's good to you, let us know. We welcome feedback. Yes. You know. Both negative and positive. Even negative feedback can be positive if we take it constructively. So we hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and this four-part series. And we look forward to seeing you all next time. But until that next time, if you're going to hustle, guys, remember to hustle faithfully. Be blessed.